Hi everyone, Smooth the Knee Face Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Francis Quinlan record, Likewise. This is a new solo effort from singer and songwriter Francis Quinlan, a dynamic vocalist who made a name for herself as the frontwoman for the burgeoning indie rock band Hop Along. But rather than build even further off the momentum of recent records Painted Shut and Bark Your Head Off Dog, she has decided to go it alone on this new LP. Which is kind of funny considering that Hop Along used to be a one-woman project, but I suppose Quinlan needed to remove herself from the Hop Along equation in order to embark on something slightly different here. And likewise is slightly different from what you may have heard on Hop Along's past couple of records, and uh, there is truly nothing worse than hearing a band member separate off into uh, doing a solo effort, and it just sounds like a watered-down derivative version of what you would much rather hear them do in the band that you primarily know them for performing in. But of course, with Hop Along's music being based on Quinlan's songwriting, there are going to be some parallels. What you won't hear on Likewise but may enjoy on a Hop Along record is the lively rock instrumentation, the intricate angular guitar work. What we get instead on this short collection of nine tracks are songs that emphasize Quinlan's talents as a singer, and a lyricist. Throughout the track list, the instrumental palette that's served up is basically a lot of keys, a lot of drums, a little acoustic guitar. There are a few outliers where you may get some strings, a few flourishes of harp, or even a dance beat with some strong bass. For the most part, instrumentally, this thing is pretty standard for a singer-songwriter record, though I wouldn't say it needs too much more than that to be at least decent because Quinlan's talents as a performer are just that good. Like on the track Your Reply, where she skillfully vocalizes these verbose verses, which feel very much like information overload jumping from one idea or experience to the next very quickly, singing about not being given enough time, having no room for your reply. I love the expressive rasp of her voice as the instrumental blasts into this kind of folk rocky chorus. The most ear grabbing thing about the track is easily the singing, which is top notch. And the aesthetic of it all reminds me of a more down to earth version of some of the more radio dominating songwriters of the 90s, like Alanis Morissette. We have an equally great vocal performance on the opening track, too, where Quinlan finds herself over not much more than some electric piano and some uh, samples of kids playing in the distance, over which we hear her waxing poetic on some pretty interesting childhood memories. I do really wish there was more to the instrumental on this track, though, and as the album progresses, the instrumentals do really prove to be a bit of an Achilles heel. Because while Quinlan's singing and songwriting throughout this thing is pretty impressive, a lot of the time it feels uh, somewhat unsupported. Like on the track Rare Thing, even with the stronger drums and harp flourishes on this track, the backing instrumentation just feels so thin. Then the whole thing transitions into some driving rhythms, some downstroke guitars that sounds like a more lo-fi take on some sounds from the first Strokes record. I mean, it's not terrible, it suffices, but the whole thing sonically just chews like dry toast. The dynamic bed of strings and keys on Detroit Lake are a lot better, they up the drama a bit, they fit the vocals really well and make for the most Fiona Apple-ish moment on the entire project. Meanwhile, A Secret is a raw acoustic moment on the record with just a touch of bass, considering how the whole thing instrumentally has been running so far, I'm not sure the record needs needed more thinning out from here. To my ears, the song Went to L.A. scratches a similar itch, but does so uh, so much better with some touches of harp, more intense vocal performance, a much stronger finish with the heaven is a second, heaven is a second at the, at the very end, which is a, an incredibly powerful moment on the entire record. Nearing the end of the record, the song Lean is a very ornate piece of indie folk, maybe one of the more layered cuts here, but it's really the indirectness of the vocal melodies that ends up making the song feel like a bit of a chore. And Now That I'm Back is originally a single I enjoyed uh, when it was teasing toward this record, but the more that I hear it, the more I uh, feel somewhat let down by the sudden transition toward a, a full band of instrumentation in the second leg of the track, after which the song bows out pretty quickly. It sort of sounded like a missed opportunity to bring the track into an even more interesting place. And once more, Carry the Zero is another track where I do enjoy some elements. I think Quinlan's vocals are quite good, but the backdrop of uh, distorted 
somewhat freakish shots of guitar coming together with the very sparse rhythm section doesn't make for as riveting a backdrop as I think she may have assumed. It's as if the music is trying to sound as curious as possible, and all that it ends up leading to is a lower impact for the song itself. I should also mention the closing track here is a Built the Spill cover, and while I've never been a big fan of the band, and I do appreciate that Quinlan is trying to elevate this song past some boilerplate indie, I kind of prefer the lazy, harmonious, easygoing vibe of the original. While it's not bad, I thought that this record would have a stronger showing, better songs, more vivid and colorful, more lush instrumentals, something that actually complemented how unique of a singer Frances Quinlan is. Vocally, she has such a bold and distinct style, and I think it's only fitting that the instrumentation behind her should be so as well. Hopefully whatever is coming down the pipe from Francis solo-wise next is a bit more flavorful and uh, gives us more to chew over, I suppose. I'm feeling a light to decent six on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, music forever.